Hi, I'm Emily Johnson. I'm the Career and Technical Education Director for Elmore County Public Schools. Hi, I'm Terrica Lamar and I'm the Assistant Director here at the Elmore County Technical Center. Hey guys, my name is Jared Sellers. I'm the Counselor at Elmore County Tech Center. Hi, my name is Lindsay Jordan and I'm the Career Coach for Elmore County Schools. We wanted to start off by sharing a little bit about our school system. Elmore County Public Schools is located in Elmore County, Alabama, which is about 30 minutes from the state capital, Montgomery. We are a large rural school district. We're a little unique in that um, we are rural, but we are not necessarily the size of a rural school district with a system enrollment of 11,353 students. We have six elementary and intermediate schools. We have five middle schools, four high schools, and one K-12 virtual school. Here at the Elmore County Technical Center, we serve students in 10th through 12th grade from the four base high schools as well as the virtual school. We currently have an enrollment of just under 1,100 students that come to us over the course of four class periods each day. You may be wondering why a rural school district from the state of Alabama decided to share about promoting CTE through social media. The reason we decided to do this is that over the course of the past several years, our social media presence has won several awards at the state level. We've also picked up a few tips and tricks along the way, as well as realizing the positive impacts that our social media presence has had on our technical center and our school system, such as increased enrollment, partnerships with business and industry, and just getting out there and people knowing who we are. We'll share more about positive impacts uh, throughout this presentation that we've seen here at the Technical Center. Another reason that we felt strongly about doing this is in education, as much as in anything else, it's so important that you tell your story. Because if we don't get out there and we don't tell the story about what we're doing here at the Tech Center, someone else will. Um, parents are very quick to hop on social media and complain about things that are happening in the schools. They are very quick to question things that are happening in the schools. And if that's all that's being seen, someone else is telling our story for us. So we try to get as much positive out there as we can to show the good things that are going on here with our students and just making sure that, that we're telling our story rather than someone else telling it. We realize that most of what we share throughout this presentation, you guys are probably doing as well. Some of you may have social media that looks better than the social media that we have, but um, we have put together and found a few things that we think might be helpful in creating social media and in sharing certain things out. The key topics covered in this presentation are determining markets and best outlets of social media, tools for hosting, sharing, and creating content. There's more to it than just putting a post out there. Best practices and tips, benefits versus challenges, and then putting it all into practice. The Elmore County Technical Center uses a variety of social media platforms as well as the school website. You always have to remember who your target audience is. Facebook is a great way to share with parents and the community by using a variety of media, which includes images, videos, text, and we're also able to share content from other people's pages. For example, if you have a club that is at your school and they have done a community service project, you can utilize what they put on their Facebook page and share it to your school's um, Facebook page. We also use it for direct messaging. For example, if we have if it's after hours and parents need to contact us, they can contact us through Facebook direct message and we usually respond to them quite quickly. We also use Instagram and that's one of our areas in which we target students because most of our students do have an Instagram page and we use just images and short text for the kids to know what is going on here at the Elmore County Technical Center. 
We also target parents through Instagram. And one of the things, the great things about Instagram is we can connect that to Facebook and our Twitter, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Once we post on Instagram, we just click connect to Facebook, connect to Twitter, and that takes care of three platforms all at one time. Our Twitter is a good way to focus on reaching out to the community as well as industries and just putting our news out there. Um, and it drives content to our other social media pages. Our school website is utilized for parents and communities. One of the things that parents like to look at before school gets started, it started is what do we have here? What programs do we have to offer? Who is the staff? Other type of information that we provide. So in addition to what we put on social media, we also put a lot of that information on the school website. And it is also the first thing that shows up. If you put in Elmore County Technical Center, our website is the first thing that pops up if you Google search us. On our next slide, it is our tools for hosting, sharing, and creating content. Students use a lot of these at school and are familiar with YouTube, Canva, Later, QR codes, and Bitly link management. YouTube is a great source for kids to watch videos because that is something that they're familiar with and they would rather watch a video versus read a page or anything. Canva is something that the students utilize at our school as well as various schools throughout our county. Um, it has pre-made templates for all our social media platforms and size ratios. So Canva, most of our things that we post on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, we utilize Canva in order for it to look presentable. Um, later, that's kind of new to us, but it also allows us to schedule for Instagram and distribution cost customization for other platforms. And it's a free account for one setup of social platforms. QR codes is a great way to get information out to students because most of them have phones and all they have to do is take their camera and scan it and they can get as much information they need about what we're doing here at the Elmore County Technical Center. And the bit.ly link management, it turns long web URLs into more manageable addresses. No active links in some social media. Our next side is best practices and tips. These slides will let you know what kind of content you need to put on and how it needs to be presented. Um, have consistent branding. If you scroll through our social media platforms, you'll see that we use our logo and familiar color schemes or layouts across all platforms. We're very consistent with our branding. So for you, you need to figure out what logo do I need to use and make sure you're consistent with everything on all of your social media platforms as well as your website. Schedule ahead to for large campaigns or busy times of the year, utilize schedules, schedulers to set up posts in advance. And when you have a Facebook page, that automatically comes up in there and just say, you can schedule what time you need for this post to post so it can get the most traffic at that time. And you also need to be careful about limiting posts for that day because sometimes you, these social media posts can be oversaturated and you want every post to get some type of recognition. So if you're posting back to back to back, a parent or a student or community leader or a business, they may miss something because we have oversaturated our page. Um, so make sure one post and spread content out over multiple days. Highlight positive is very important for you to put out positive information for our students and our parents and our community. Make sure it's something uplifting. If it's an award, if it's student of the month, if it's um, so if we had a guest speaker or anything like that, that's that's positive for your school. Use media, combine photos and short video clips with text to maximize attention and access for follows. So make sure you have the right equipment to use in order to capture those images as well as your um, videos and make sure you're linked to the right. Um, you can go back to that um, slide about hosting, sharing and creating content so it can it can be presentable. And as I would say, it could be pretty and cute or however you want to say it. Diversify content, post content that showcases student body and school staff, as well as announcements and inf information. Um, you want to see, you, the parents want to see their child 
in these images and all in these videos if they have given prior permission, which I think we're going to talk about that in a minute on another slide. But they love to see their child out there on social media in a positive manner of things that they're doing here at the Career Tech Center. Cross promote, use other profiles or platforms to drive traffic. And that goes back to uh, a previous slide about using Facebook, using Instagram and Twitter and your school's web website. Complement other school communication. Social profiles should not be your sole form of communication with, so with stakeholders. And remember, it's public. So stay professional and avoid any personal or small group specific information. So you make sure the content that you're putting out there is presentable and it is acceptable to your terms and regulations at your school. And also make sure that you have spoken to, I mean, it depends on who's in charge of your social media. Some things may have to be approved. So you need to set those parameters before you get started. Does the director need to approve it? Does the principal need to approve it? So make sure you put those guidelines in place so you can make sure you're putting out the best content for your audience. The benefits of promoting CTE on social media, what we do versus what they think we do. So you always have this concept, and I've done some research on stigma of what career tech is, or some people still call it trade school. But once you put that positive content out there, they know what you're doing. They don't have to think about what we're doing here at our school. Growing partnerships with business and industry. We have very good partnerships with our businesses. We have many companies that want to partner with us for our with our students to offer them jobs or to offer them some type of training. So um, you got to remember when you put that information out there, if there is a need for plumbers in your area, of course, you want to highlight your plumbing class and increase parental awareness and involvement. You want your parents to be involved. You want them to see their children. You want them to see what is going on here at the Career Tech Center. So when if they see that, hey, they have um, a fire program there, my husband, he's a fireman, let me see what kind of connections that I can make there that I can assist their program with. So you never know who's looking at your content and who's willing to help you with some of your programs there. Instant answers to questions through messaging. Like I said earlier, Facebook has um, a messenger. So if there's a parent that needs to get in touch with you or ask questions or need some information on a program, that is a great way for them to communicate with you and it's instant. Hosting and streaming virtual ceremonies. As you know, we're in a pandemic. So we utilize our Facebook page in order to stream our, our some of our programs here that parents cannot attend. And it also provides documentation for certification and compliance. Uh, we all know that we have these rules and things that we have to submit in order to be in compliance. So you already have that documentation. If you just like, hey, I remember back in March, we did such and such. So you can go back to your social media post and pull that information if you need it. Now, with benefits, there will come challenges. Challenges of promoting CTE on social media. You have to be consistently posting. You can't say, well, I'm going to post one thing in August and then I'm going to pick it back up in September. That's being very inconsistent. So you need to make sure you have the right people in charge of your social media platforms in order for them to be able to um, post pictures. One of the things we do is if a, and we know we can't be everywhere at at all times. So if a teacher is doing something, a lab or something interesting or something that the students that she wants to spotlight, spotlight or he wants to spotlight, we just say, hey, text such and such a picture so we can highlight that on our social media platforms and just be consistent with your, po um, with your posting, scheduling new content and observe pandemic regulations. There are some pictures we do have to put a dis disclaimer out to sum up for some of our content and say, hey, this was prior to our mask order. So you will see kids without a mask and you will see some kids with masks. So you may have to put that disclaimer out there in order to follow your pandemic regulations at your school system. Um, media permission forms to identify students. Um, that's one of the things we have a user agreement that the students sign or the parents sign in order to say, hey, I don't want my kids to be seen on social media or it's okay to post my kids on social media. So you do need those forms to let 
the person in charge of your social media or to let the teacher know, hey, when you go in that classroom, make sure you don't spotlight their children, that child or those children, because their parents don't want them to be on social media. So you got to be very careful of what the content and what images you want to put out there so you won't violate a child's privacy based on the information from their parents. Capturing quality images and footage. So make sure you have the proper equipment in order for these images to be great as well as um, right now I'm talking on a microphone. So you might need to invest in an iPad. You may need to invest in a camera or invest in a tripod in order to capture these moments in order to make your social media to look as best as possible. And negative comments and trolling. There are times, you know, you you have those parents that always have something negative to say. So you do have to monitor things on your site that you may have to go back in and delete. Or on Instagram, you have the capability to cut off comments. It's great information to get out there, but there are some challenges to some things on these social media platforms that you need to be aware of. So Ms. Lamar is just giving you guys some tips and strategies and benefits of uh, using social media. Now we're going to get into putting it in practice. If you guys look below, these are the things that we do yearly. Um, Miss Jordan is going to cover these in more detail when I'm done with my part of the presentation. But the awards days, the, the tours, the student of the month, these are all very obvious things to put, in your, uh, to put into your social media um, for folks to see. Um, but always, and I, Miss Jordan's awesome at this, and you know Miss Johnson's really good at this too. And I'm trying to get better at it, at it. But if you just have in the back of your head, you know, always like there's something always you know cool going on at the tech center um, with students doing projects and things like that. But you just kind of be mindful that hey, um, you know, the, the aviation class is shooting rockets off in the parking lot today. Let's go take pictures, you know, put that on social media. It takes about two minutes and, you know, you're going to go watch anyways. Let everybody else see it. So those are some things, you know, if, if, if the medical science program is doing a, uh, you know, a CPR t uh, class, it's take, you know, go, go over there and take that picture. So that, that's the, some, some of the things that I would suggest is kind of don't just save it for, you know, special events. Always kind of be mindful that, you know, when something cool is happening, go get it out there. One of the things, uh, and you know, everybody talks about this, is the perceptions of CTE, you know, perception, you know, the trade school idea, you know, how people, you know, still view um, the Career Tech Center the way that they did when they were, you know, in high school in, you know, 1985. And I get that, um, but, but it's changing. And, you know, we've seen proof that it's changing here. And, you know, there's lots of variables that go into that, but um, one of them is uh, promotion through social media. And, you know, if you're doing, you know, really cool stuff at your school and, you know, you have these awards days that, you know, that they didn't have when they were in school and, you know, you have, um, you know, these really awesome instruction and projects, if that stays in your bubble, your admin, your teachers, your administrator, your, uh, your people at the central office, if they all know it, that's fine. But, Social media is the easiest and best way to get that out to the to the community and and you know give them that that glimpse into what CTE looks like today. So as I said earlier, uh, one of the things that we do to promote ourselves is we have an awards ceremony at the end of every year. We've got so many kids; they do great things in their career tech program, and this is the way that we can recognize them. We've got industry leaders presenting scholarships to students, so. You know, it's a big deal and we try to make it a big deal because, you know, it's another thing to try to change that perception of, of career techs. We try to make it really special. Um, in 2020, obviously, you know, we weren't able to have it in this style. So what we did was uh, we had a virtual award ceremony where the students would come out of the tech center and they would pick it up. Um, not nearly as extravagant as our regular awards day, but we were able to use social media to present our winners to the community. Um, Last year, we were able to have the awards day, but due to COVID restrictions, we had to have a limited number of guests. Um, but we were able to use Facebook and live stream so that the friends and family, you know, those students could, you know, kind of somewhat take part in this recogni uh, recognition of the, of the students. Um, I'm looking forward to this year and hopefully we can get back to a full house again. Last year, because of restrictions due to COVID, as well as the ongoing construction on our campus that is improving our facilities for all of our students, 
we were unable to host our ninth grade freshman tours that we typically host every single fall or spring. And so that is a vital and critical part of our recruiting to the Technical Center. And this was the first year that we've been unable to do that. So we had to be creative. How can we still showcase our campus when you can't physically come here? So the answer was a virtual tour. And we just showcased every single program in little snippets. So we made individual videos of every single program on campus and then combined all of them to make one large virtual tour. And so it took a lot of work to put this together, but it's at such a high priority with our virtual tour needing to recruit students and needing to bring those student numbers back up and be strong coming out of COVID, then it was worth the time. So um, each one of these videos has a student speaking over the video and giving a testimonial of why they chose to enroll in this program or what they expect this program to do for their futures. And what has been really awesome is seeing our enrollment this year after what we thought was going to be a, such a struggle trying to bring students into this world of, you know, check it out digitally instead of come and set foot and put your, you know, get to see a first person view. Enrollment is up. And so we're very excited to be able to say that the strategy that we had to put into place as our plan B was actually a great strategy and it has been very successful. Another way to showcase the things that we do on social media is through our elementary CTE video. This wasn't pushed out on social media as much of a public statement as it was one for our elementary students specifically as a recruiting tool for them. And so we um, put this on YouTube and sent it out through our counselors. But this video was intended to speak to the youngest of the youngest in our system, to start introducing children as young as K-4 and creating for them the ability to see careers that they can now see themselves in in the future. Another way that we've utilized social media is going back to that old school website. You know, I'm a more of a traditional person. If I want to know something about the Elmore County Technical Center, I'm going to Google it and I'm going to go to that school website. And so the parents of our high school students, we know that a lot of them are still relying on that school website. So it needs to have good information. It needs to have everything on it that the parents need, but also a lot of this social media content in addition. So we created some slides to be able to put those student testimonials from that virtual tour in some visuals that parents could click through and let each student that represented every community that we serve give them that testimonial. And we also linked to our virtual tour, um, my career coach resource site, and all kinds of other information so that everything a parent could need is right there on that front page. CTE Month is probably one of the most focused on areas of social media for career tech individuals. So even if you don't do social media the rest of the year, you do it during CTE Month. So during CTE Month, we highlight every program at our technical center, every program on base campuses at this school. These are the CTE programs that are offered. And then we just talk about other little fun facts in CTE. And the greatest thing that we've been able to do with this that, to make, that made life so much easier was scheduling. I needed something that would be able to allow us to schedule through Instagram because it does not have its own built-in scheduler. And so later was that answer. And it allows you to customize your message for each area of your social platform. So one for Facebook, one for Instagram, one for Twitter. And you can add other social platforms as well to your packet. And so when you put that message out, you can schedule it for the entire month. What was 28 days worth of scheduling was done in one day. So that scheduling tool was a great way to highlight our programs. Another way that we've utilized social media is promoting our CTE summer exploration camp. So every summer we pull our uh, eighth graders who are leaving and are entering ninth grade and we host a summer camp where they rotate through every single program and allow them a chance to get hands-on, very fun experience in CTE. Promotion of that is difficult because we host the camp as soon as school gets out. So it's usually the week after Memorial Day or that next week. And so when we go to try to spread that message to the teachers and the counselors and the eighth grade students, sometimes it gets overshadowed with other information. So one way that we make sure that that gets put out there so that we get as many students as possible who want to attend is through social media. And we post it until our um, parents and our students Hey, if you haven't heard about this, if your student didn't come home talking about it, here's how to apply. And this year was the first time that we actually received a lot of our applications. They came out of contacts on social media, so we know that it is working. 
while we often plan for our social media efforts and put a lot of time and effort into it, sometimes we also do spontaneous things. So this year, as we started the school year, I thought it would be a great opportunity to showcase how our students are back, our numbers are up, and um, enrollment is beyond where we ever thought it would be coming back from COVID. So to show that excitement about being back on campus, we just ran around campus really quick on the first couple of days, shot a few snippets, a few videos. We were actually preparing to showcase this for our open house. This was kind of our, hey, check us out and come to open house. Well, you'll notice in this video that we did not have a mask mandate at the time. We started the school year as mask optional. And on the day that we posted this video and we're trying to promote our open house, we got word that mask requirements were going to come into effect the very next day and that our open house was going to need to be postponed. Well, we weren't going to let this work go to waste. So we still put it out there and still promoted and said, hey, this is what's going on today. So we published it before the mask mandate was announced. And we just said, enrollment is up. We're really excited. Check out our programs. And we want you to come see us as soon as you're available to. So it was another way to just showcase our campus to our community and remind them one more time, we're still here and we're still doing CTE. Many of you watching this presentation are probably thinking, how in the world do you find time to do all of that? The reality is that we make time for things that we find important. And we have seen again, proven over time that social media does make a positive impact, not just on perceptions, but on actual data, on enrollment in our programs, on the students and parents who are now aware of things that they were not aware of before and have the ability to now apply or participate in things. This is not a professional firm that comes in. There's no budget for that. We just work together. We use those scheduling tools and those things that we can to make it a little bit more efficient and look a little bit more professional. And we learn from past experiences to try to improve on each new campaign or each new area that we branch into regarding social media. If you would like to visit any of our social media sites, they are listed here below. We have our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our school website, and then YouTube where we have uploaded some of our videos. If you have any questions about today's presentation or would like any more information, our contact info is listed below. Um, you can reach out to us by email and we would be glad to send the handout from today's presentation, to share today's presentation, or to answer any questions that you may have. We'd like to thank you for your time today, and we hope that our presentation was helpful.